Hi, I'm Joy McKnight, Transaction Banking and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm here today with Victor Penna, Head of Corporate Sales and Treasury Solutions, Transaction Banking at Standard Chartered. Hi, Victor. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're at Eurofinance in Copenhagen. Uh, what do you think are the biggest challenges facing corporates today? Thanks, Joy. I think there's a couple of issues. Um, I think one of the things that we're consistently hearing um, at Eurofinance is there's a concern about transaction banking and the future of transaction banking in terms of, you know, are banks committed to the various markets? Um, concerns about some of the products, we've heard some, you know, comments around notional pooling. Uh, that's one set of issues. I think there's a, another set of issues around how do we grow our business in emerging markets. So there's a real interest in supply chain finance. And thirdly, uh, a general theme of you know how do we improve efficiency in treasury through technology so that we can have more time to focus on strategic treasury needs. And how are banks or how can banks help their clients work through these challenges? Well, I, I think there's um, a number of ways, a number of things we can do. I think firstly around you know, uh, having contingency plans around banking relationships, you know, different models, maybe, you know, a second pool or a backup bank type of structure to cover those situations um, where a bank may withdraw from a market or just to ensure that you have backup services available. Uh, obviously, supply different supply chain finance types of tools and uh, finance programs to help grow relationships with both suppliers as well as uh, buyers, distributors, etc. And then I think in terms of efficiency, some of the, the process re-engineering or review uh, types of services, advisory services banks now offer, as well as the technology banks can deliver to improve processes. Um, and the internationalization of the RMB is uh, you know, growing at a pace. How can, Europe, especially European corporates, what kind of opportunities is that opening up for them? Well, I think there's been a lot of liberalisation. So the first thing, it is possible now to release cash from China through a number of different uh, ways, including pooling structures. And I think, you know, once you have access to that cash, then it affords you the uh, possibility of actually paying for, you know, goods and uh, goods that you're uh, sourcing from China. Um, and their benefits in paying in renminbi versus uh, US dollars. It removes the FX premium and enables you to potentially reduce the cost of those um, goods that you're sourcing. And secondly, you know, if you're selling into China or selling cross-border, the ability to invoice in renminbi uh, and receive renminbi and maybe then use that renminbi for any imports that you have as well. Okay, and what would you say it has been the biggest market, market disruptor this year in this past year? Well, I think one of the big market disruptors has actually been, obviously, I think the withdrawal of RBS, which is a bit of a shock to a lot of uh, corporate treasurers, and that's made them rethink, you know, how they manage their treasury. I think, secondly, volatility in the emerging markets with uh, FX, you know, whether it be China, whether it be Malaysia, uh, Nigeria, etc., and that's caused a bit of a rethink around risk management as well.